people, Leo Faden. Welcome to the Straight Faden Podcast. Tonight I got a special guest. Got DJ Dilly. Willie D. Willie D, my bad. Like, kind of faded. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, how was your trip? Like, how you doing, man? Good, good, man. Just been working uh, nonstop, really. Even when I thought I'm on a break, I'm still working. Do you always find I, something to do? Yeah, <laughs> like low key. Yeah. There's always some, there's something's always happening. Just For like, sure. That's gotta what, put yourself in those good situations, you know. Yeah, that's what I've been dealing with too. You know, like yeah. I gotta keep the pockets going and all that. Yeah, just keep looking for different opportunities, man. Yeah, it's out sh- there. For just sure. Gotta go um, for it. How do you start DJing? DJing. I've been DJing since I was 14, 15 years old. So, uh, pretty much grew up with my dad doing it and my uncles. I'd always ride along with their gigs since I was like seven or you know so you had to learn eight years from old. Them. Yeah, pretty much carrying all their equipment and shit. Oh, okay. So like a little, uh, you know, like little eight year old carrying a fucking six foot fucking speaker everywhere and shit. <laughs> like yeah, so pretty much I had to grow up strong. <laughs> how, how was it like your experience or, or what you took from that that made you be a DJ now? Because that's pretty well, much your yeah, career, right? Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. That's like the next step for DJs really is start producing your own music because like. You're here, when you're DJing, you're just kind of, re, you know, making a, a creation with other people's creation. But, like, at some point, you just, like, the hardest part is making your own music when you're a DJ because you don't, you're never going to get that perfect sound that you always, you know, want. Yeah, yeah. So you just got to keep getting better and better until, you know, eventually it'll get there. But you'll just, you know what I mean? Like, you have yeah, to yeah. kind of criticize yourself harder than anyone really would. So what do you think your sound is for, like? Me, right now? I mean... That's all. That's also another hard part is that being a DJ, you love all genres, all music. You wish you could literally do it all. Yeah, yeah. And I really try my best, but like, right now as a DJ, I feel like I should only produce what I need, what I what I want to use at, at the clubs, at the parties, and everything. So you know yeah. what I mean, like you know, like the, a regular DJ, your whole playlist. And like all. yeah, not like reggaeton, hip hop, you know, the essentials yeah, yeah. at any kind of club or party. And I don't know. I just kind of always use those connections. Off each other, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, if I want to, you know, put out some new songs, I'm a DJ, so I know hella fucking DJs in the industry. Yeah, yeah. Boom, put it out to all of them, ma- mass, you know, mass amount of it. And then if I'm a DJ and I hear something that I like, or an artist that I like, and if I like it and I'm a DJ, it's like, yeah, like, come to the studio, let's, let's go, let's work. <laughs> like, let's work Are on something. Have you ever put on, like, for a big artist? Because, like, I must say, like, big shout out to the DJs, because yeah. when I started up, a DJ was on that pretty much helped me out. Too, yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, we t- we do take a lot of the responsibilities for artists that are, that are popping. I'm not going to cap. Like, if for a sure. DJ hasn't heard it, then you're most likely not popping. I'm not going to Like, that's just what it is. But I've never actually been with, like, a major, major, like, large, you know, artist yet. But I'm, I'm more, like, I, I like coming up better. You know what I mean? Like, don't you want work till you? Yeah, work all the way to the end and see everyone su- like succeed together. Yeah, for sure. So that's always been a big thing with me. Like I don't know, kind of like like a biopic. Mm-hmm. Like my, li- I'm literally setting it up for the end when I'm like rich and having fun and telling the whole bio. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. how many albums sold, how many clubs play. Like that's crazy that you gotta go through all that because. Coming from a DJ, that's, like, more than just DJing, you know? You already got your mind on well, I mean, it just depends on what you want in it, because you got DJs who are just working for, you know, just for fun. It's a hobby to them. It's, it's like, they could really not care about it. Or my That was kind of like my dad. Like, he was more, like, side hustle. He has a normal job and mm-hmm. yada, yada. He never really took it any further than that. But I, like, took it a step further. And there is money in it. You just got to know how to put yourself in the situation where you're part of everything, you know? Yeah, for sure. And that's crazy yeah. that you're saying that now because I'm pretty sure you got more goals right now too. Yeah. But you did the dub show. Yeah, as a little that's kid. A, that's a, yeah, 15 that's years, a, 15, 16 years old, yeah. How was that, you know? Because that's a big <laughs> event. <laughs> yeah, I mean, me always uh, like liking to perform and everything and the opportunity struck. Um, shout out to the Kovacs family. The, uh, the actual CEO of Dub Magazine was the one that asked me. Cause so I, like I DJ for I DJ for his daughter's Sweet Sixteen. Then is it the, the so the yeah, because of that, that we were friends. Yeah, I you know stepped up to where the opportunity was there, and ever since then I've been on every LA tour. And how how's that experience for you? You're from LA or from the LA? I'm area? from El Monte. Yeah, El Monte, so, yeah, yeah, so sixty six. So you, <laughs> you get love? Huh? You get love from artists like this for love? Um, 
I mean, the ones that I work with, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, because I mean, cause also, like, working with the radio station, too, like, everyone tries to reach out and, you know, ask for advice. But all I could really say is, like, there's, the only advice anyone should get is that, like, if you're not promoting yourself, how are people going to hear it? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's part of being the artist is you got to promote yourself and make yourself, like, credible. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that guy. I've heard of this guy. Like, come into conversation, you know? Like, oh, you know who's dope? This guy's dope. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. you got to you gotta kind of just be consistent on, on people saying your name around. You know what I mean? Yeah, just keep on going. Through. Yeah, like, just, I don't know. Just surround yourself with a lot of positive people, too. Yeah. People who just want to see you win all the time. Cause yeah, for sure. Because that's how I was kind of brought up. Everyone that hired me since when I was doing gigs for, like, $50 an hour, like, you know, it was all out of love for my dad. You know, oh, he's just as good as you, or always oh, getting yeah. good as you. Oh, he's gonna make you retire, up until the point where like, oh shit, I actually did make him retire. Like, <laughs> I already took over completely. And that's like, <laughs> and well, going, that's a good feeling. And going further, it is and it isn't, cause like you just like, damn, my dad's old. Like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Those music days are gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you said, oh, I saw that. I used to get nervous when you used to perform. Uh, uh, yeah, I used to get. How you got anxiety because I always want everything running smooth and perfect, but also, also being a DJ, you got to be prepared for anything. So anything could happen during someone's set. So you just got to like just know what to do if something goes out or goes wrong. And that's love that you've been doing it so young that you pretty much got that experience, right? Dude, yeah, people be tripping out. Like even when I be performing like at small shows, like I got, um, uh, like in Pomona or, or out in, um, like Santa Ana, like they'd be like, "Hey, where's the mic?" Blah blah blah. You know, oh, is this turned up all the way right? Blah, blah, blah. I'm just looking at everything like, yeah. "Oh, you're good, man." You saw like, I mean, just you know, have fun out there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So like, you like helping the artists too. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, why not? <laughs> no, because there's some DJs that they just they just they, walk in their laptop, plug in. Hey, bro, this is not working, bro. It's <laughs> like, uh, what about like, those like, DJs that have the bro. playlist already, and then they act yeah. like they're scratching. Oh, like EDM, H? like EDM DJs. No, EDM DJs is different though. They're, per, they're I call them producer DJs mm. because they're playing their own music, and I give them credit for that. You know that not everyone can do that. Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, I have my respects for them. Like, just being in front of a crowd of any anybody's is hard. You know, just crowd of ten to a thousand. Like, and then these guys, even if you're just pretending, just being in front of the stage, you guys have no idea how many eyes are on you, how many people mm -hmm. how many different vibes and you're like literally trying to like round them all up and put them in one level that where they all gonna just have the best time of their lives For just sure. make the best memories ever yeah, that's a crazy feeling from a dj point of view now that you say that like, yeah like you gotta really think about it because well like the big guys like you know tiesto or like i don't know like dead mouse and he's literally just <sighs> grabs air hold of everybody and just Let's all have a good time. Boom. You know, like the bass just hits. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's been one of your worst and best times while being a DJ? The what? What's one, one of those of your worst and best times while being a DJ? One of my worst is when it's hot and it's like, it's, a hun it's like 104 degrees. You're on a black top stage. So it's like 115 on that <laughs> stage and you're just like, nothing's working. There's like, it's just like gigs, like you can't do anything about it. When it's just too hot, your laptop is glitching, everything's just, like, yeah, yeah, overheating. Yeah. You're just, like, I mean, there's nothing yeah, you, you can do. Control. There, yeah, there's yeah. nothing you can do. I mean, you can put fans, wall, you know, all this crazy stuff. But, at the, you know what I mean? Like, there's just so much you can do. And you're just, like, dancing God's hand pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> this show's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know. Right? Yeah, but, like, it goes back to you got to be prepared. Yeah. And, uh... You um, say you used to work at a radio station? Yeah. The nine, what is it? Nine, um, the real 92.3? Well, yeah, all, all of them pretty much. I Heart Radio. I did all their their street um, street team stuff, all their major events. I opened up for a lot of theater shows for, like, major artists. But, yeah, like, dude, honestly, that was, like, my, my, my job. <laughs> <laughs> was it? That like, was, like, literally the best job but ever. But were you college job? Because it sounded huh? like you were having fun. Were you, were you college your job? Yeah, I was having hell of fun. I mean, because my colleagues were actually other DJs, so, like, we were just friends, like, hey, like, you going to this spot, going to this spot, mm -hmm. like, hey, open up for me. Like, at some point, I was opening up for the main the main DJs there, like, the radio DJs. Yeah. Like, you know, because, you know, they, you know, they like to get fashionably late or whatever reason, bring their, their whole entourage in, and I'm yeah. just like, just give me a call, like, hey, yo, can you open up at this spot in LA real quick? I'd be like, 
Yeah, I mean, I ain't doing shit. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's I do it. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, like, how do you get your gigs? Like, you just got your own agent? Or no, you just, I'm, I'm you my own agent. I tried my mom, but she can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, too, too many emails? No, nah, it's me. I'm too difficult. <laughs> well, because you were saying you want everything perfect. You're always pretty much right. It's like, not even that. It's just, like, I don't know. It just It just depends. Like, I mean, first of all, I need to get paid. That's the number one thing. At the se- uh, secondly, it's like, I don't know, I just get tired of some certain gigs, to, you know, I'm doing and stuff like that. Like over and, and over? Like the family gigs and all that. Like, that's oh, all yeah, cool. Yeah. It's all, you know, when you, when you want to get into, you know, because I haven't seen my family in a while, so I've been spending a lot more time with my family yeah. uh, rather than just working and stuff like that. So right now I'm just like, um, you know, I could do a family gig or not, you know, one or two, but when it was like just constant, oh, my friend needs one, my, my family needs one, it's just like, <laughs> like, dude, I'm trying to perform out in the Palladium and, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, at SoFi Stadium, like, I'm not really yeah. <laughs> trying to do I these backyard things went anymore. To, to that stadium, that's like a whole oh, different yeah, level. Yeah, I was That'd de- be dope right there. I was DJing there for the Chargers for a minute. Their, oh, first, their first season there, yeah. Uh, oh. How's that experience? Uh, it was under the radio, the radio station. They, I mean, technically, they were, uh, they, like, I'm not part of the radio station, but I, I filled in for them. Oh, okay. Because the, technically, they weren't, like, you know, couldn't really have hired anyone yet, mm-hmm. so they kind of like hired me as a third per- party, like as an actual DJ. So yeah, yeah. so it was cool. So it was cool. I mean, I mean, I was getting a check from the Chargers, so <laughs> my check literally see LA Chargers on it. So it was pretty That's cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you went to the Slug Walk too. The what? Slug Walk. The yeah, um, yeah. That How was, was a, that experience. I never experienced anything like that it, in it my life. It was insane. It was just a giant party, really. To be honest. So the party <laughs> kind of yeah. contradicted what it was about, but like, yeah. hey, it was it was fun. I had I got no complaints. <laughs> like you got pack pack or like. I mean, if you call the entire streets of downtown LA just full of half naked people, like it's pretty crazy. Like I saw um, big artists were there. Yeah, that was more like towards like the main stage. I was just working street. Oh, so I was under the I was under the street team, so I was just making people party out. You know, the stragglers, or whatever. But it was still a vibe. I knew a lot of people that were actually there, so they came by, show love, had a big old group of girls with me. It was like, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was dope. <laughs> and I was going to ask you, um, what are some of the goals that you have already accomplished? But uh, it's crazy that the way that you're telling me already, I feel like you accomplished a lot already. I'm not I'm not even close to what I really want to do, to be honest. What like, I'm goals? trying to perform stadiums. I'm trying to find that one artist that would just get me in front of all these people that I want. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm trying to, I don't know, like, Kendrick Drake level, like, just kill it and have everyone singing along to to a song, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's really, that's, like, the main goal right now. And I'm going to name some artists, because I, I, you could correct me or whatever, but I feel like you're busy for them or you have met them. But you could put, let me know, like, one of them that have gave you some good advice for your career or mm. somebody that helped you. I saw you were working with Kendrick Lamar, G-Unit, Sugar Free, AD, King Lee OG, then Big Boy, you met Big Boy. Oh, you work with him, right? Yeah, he was, <laughs> we're like co-workers, yeah. so it's crazy. Oh, Genesis? <laughs> it's like my boss and my co-worker at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> um, Black China, 21 Savage, CNG, Nipsey Hussle, Michael Blackson, and Travis Barker. I... So a lot of those were all the same events, but I was pretty much, I did some of their sets, a lot of their sets, actually, because, you know, it's, shit happens when the DJ can't do it, and it's like, yeah, you do it, like, pretty much. Like, so you had a pressure. Then. I had a press, you know, it's, there's a lot of pressure just pressing play, and you press play at the wrong time, and you just, ah, uh, then I just do that. You just like, you well, <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the times was, like, during Famous Dex, uh, mm. when he went the, at the height of his, out of his high point with that song with ASAP. Yeah. And he was just like, wait, wait, because I played a little early, so I like, and everyone just right away just screamed. Once I dropped the, the like the first four <laughs> seconds <laughs> of it, and everyone's just like going wild. He's like, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a <laughs> minute. I was just like, oh shit. I was like, I kind of like, spun it back, and he's like, hey, just play that shit, man. Just play that shit. It's like, all right, cool. He was cool about it, but <laughs> the other times where I like cut it too soon, or you know, just dumb mistakes. He just. Just comes with practice. Really. And how you took a DJ classes or how you got the, the most experience? The to DJ like just how doing gigs. Just learning. <laughs> just doing. I'm more. As I'm, you a, go, right? I'm a hands-on person, bro. Like honestly, like even when it comes to producing, I didn't even like finish my school. Like I learned from my studio 
like my host, everyone from the studio pretty much taught me mm. what I actually really needed to know, not in a whole classroom environment. I suck at school, man. Like, it just, I already knew it since I was in high school. I barely did enough just to get out of there just so I can graduate. <laughs> well, if you stay Because I, de- I knew I was going to DJ, so I was like, man, ain't nobody need no fucking the poem for any of this. I mean, it'd be nice to. I mean, I could fall onto another job if it don't go well, but I'm trying to, I don't know, I kind of Ranch put myself, no, nah, put myself in a world like I have no other choice but to succeed in this. You know what I mean? Like, well, I don't, I don't do shit on anything else. <laughs> but even that, you, I saw you make beats. Big beats, photography, videography, so a graphic lot. designing. You do a lot. Of but like, I'm just an artistic person. Like, honestly, like it's just all fun to me. Do you ever get like writer's blogs or like anything? Like, you just can do something? Nah, I just sometimes I just get too busy. Like, I'm DJing too many gigs. I, like, even right now, I'm DJing too many gigs, and I haven't produced a beat with my friends in a long time. Like, uh, you know, shout out to Room 11, uh, HF Studios out in Glendora. Um, yeah, like, uh, man, I just wish, like, I should really be making music. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, the, the gigs are cool, the money's good, and it's just like, uh, but I'm trying to, like, I feel like you could get better, get, beats. Big, like, get better, get you bigger. You have pretty dope beats, like, like really dope beats. Oh, yeah. I nah, I mean, I'm definitely underrated, and I definitely need to work on it better so it sounds cleaner and sounds more level. My ears are fucked up, by the way, like, mm-hmm. from so many years of being on stage. The big speaker than all? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't wear earplugs. That, you know, nobody, people told me, but I didn't believe it, but yeah. yeah I, but but when it comes down to, like, mixing and mastering, I can't do that for shit to save my life because... They're, they're done. <laughs> what, what you think about, like, those websites, like, eMaster, that will do it for you, <clears throat> like, the mastering? Have um, you tried it? No. Well, not when I have a studio full of mixers and, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't need that. <laughs> oh, yeah, with your hands on. No, I, and I'm I, more, like, virtual. And but I it, it also, like, I hear it. You know what I mean? So I, I hear what they're, what they're mixing and what they're, what they're doing with their stuff. And, like, can you make my stuff sound like your guys' stuff? Like, <laughs> like just make it sound better? Like, it, the beat's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a little rough on the, on some parts, but yeah. I mean, you gotta build a team. Yeah, for sure. Um, look out, look out after you like that. Yeah, the team for sure helps somebody, especially a DJ or an artist or back back and forth. You know. Like, yeah. You need to have that team. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you do on your days off? I work. Uh, DJing the strip clubs. <laughs> yeah, so DJ. <laughs> or DJing the restaurants. I don't know. <laughs> but everything DJ. Huh? Everything just DJ. Pretty much. Everything revolves around music, and even sometimes I need a break from it because you're just like, you hear everything every day. Yeah. At the radio station, it's like, you think I, I like the radio station after? Like, I mean, listening to radio? Because <laughs> get annoying, right? So like, on the car rides to our gigs, I'd be like playing like just random funk freestyle disco because when i'm at work it's just hip-hop pop <laughs> you know reggaeton and i'm just like or even alternative rock like and i'm just work. like <laughs> i'm like oh god and then in the clubs you just you know yg and you know everyone popping and you know it's like oh, we play so much <laughs> of this stuff every day. <laughs> For real, I, I stopped listening to the radio like a while back. And that's why I kind of liked when I was like hanging around with like Draco and the Sting team and all them because they were underground, so everything was new. Every person on their team was had their own style and was new, but it was still hip hop. So yeah, rest in peace, uh, yeah, Draco. Draco so yeah, like it's so everyone had they had the same genre, but so so different. Like, their rap styles were, were all, their cadence were different. Their beats, they could literally rap on each other's beats, and they all sound different still. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, like, the whole sound. I remember maybe an artist, too, I heard that sound, and I was like, this was going to blow up, like, a while back. Yeah. And yeah, my, had it. Yeah, my buddy is his DJ, so we got to hang around with him a lot. How was that working with him, or, like? I mean, he, I mean, he lived with me for a while, so, you know, we were cool. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, we're still cool. I mean, he's got his own thing going on right now, but. But, uh, like, I'm grateful that I met him, you know? I'm grateful that he brought me around, his family, his, he, you know, Draco's family, and everyone. I got to meet everyone on that side. Desto Dub. They're all they're super cool people. You plan to work with Ralph, Ralphie the Plug? Uh, Ralphie the Plug? Yes. Me? Nah. They, they they got their team. Like like I said, all of them, that specific team, they've all literally grew up with each, with each other oh. on the same block, like, since they were kids. Damn. So... What was it? Like, drastically ruling and killing every outsider? Like, literally, like, they don't let outsiders in. Jeez. 
<laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Like yeah. they're they're really about it. They're a real family. Yeah, for sure. Um, I saw you were a strawberry live on ABC on the news. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, How yeah. How you found yeah, out that, that you were on the news? Um, right away, man. You just see the news team. Uh, cause it was for the world record. For the most people dressed as fruits uh, on the beach. It was, it was, I think it was at Huntington. Huntington? Yeah. What was the record? I don't know. It was like over... It was like full of strawberries? Mm, every fruit. Like every fruit you can think of. You see pickle ricks, <laughs> big ass bananas, uh, grapes. Like, and they just happened to have an extra costume <laughs> for me and my homeboy, uh, DJ Protégé. And we're just up in the mix and up in the news. <laughs> yeah. We're just acting a fool. I mean, we were there like at four in the morning, so we were just like, uh, uh, like radio strawberry. station stuff. <laughs> like, I'm really going. Like, we only we really only here like to be on the news. You know, like fuck it, might as well. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, we're yeah. just acting a fool in the background. How is it? You said big boy. He, he's your boss. Um, like my boss coworker. How is it working with him? Oh man, it's great. Does he really make you laugh a lot? Yeah. <laughs> Funny. I mean, like honestly, I think I had like uh, a lot of the best experiences with him. To be honest, just working under him. He's just a super humble dude. Everyone looks up to him. Like, like he's everyone's voice. He's everyone's dad. He's everyone's. He's LA's dad, basically. Like, yeah. He talks to everyone in their own way. So it's pretty cool. It was good working right right along him all the time. Making sure that he had what he had, you know, make sure he was good and had his things and whatever he needed, we just pretty much will help him out. <laughs> <laughs> Who are um, some of the artists you would like to work with in the future? That I would like to work with? Yeah. Mm. Uh, right now, I mean, like, I'm solid with what I got right now. I just, like I said, I just want to see my artists that I'm working with blow up. You know what I mean? Like, but in the future, I don't know. Like, everyone's different. I have to know the person personally. Like, I met Snow the product. She's cool as fuck. Like, I mean, with us, she was. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I wouldn't mind working with her. She's dope. She's got bars. She's got hella bars. Like, oh, well, yeah. Some of the artists that you manage? I mean, that I met or? Well, no, manage or that you work with that's in your team. Uh, I mean, CNG, Young Drummer Boy, um, D Other. Uh, that's D dot Other. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Um, well, how is it working with West Coast? West Coast Drew. Uh, Dev, we got a lot of artists that we're working with, DJ Turf, and we just, honestly, I just want to see everyone blow up, man, you know, all of us eating together at, you know, Nobu and shit, or out in the, out of country, mm -hmm. just enjoying ourselves and stuff, like, that's where it's really what Life, it's about, man, you know, like, like work, just work succeeding with, with the ones you, you know, came up with, that's all it really is, but, I don't know, I wanted to work with the game, to be honest, the game, or, um, I feel like maybe somebody from reggaeton. I mean, obviously, Bad Bunny's way too big already, <laughs> but like somebody, like somebody that. coming up in reggaeton for sure, up and coming artists. Um, so there's an upcoming artist that you think that th nobody has seen yet, but you feel like they they're gonna blow up from reggaeton. Oh, uh, from reggaeton, <laughs> the other. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. honestly, the other is honestly one of the hardest. Rap Latino rappers right now. I mean, as far as reggaeton. Oh, for sure. Well, yeah, to you gotta you gotta look him up. <laughs> <laughs> He's dope. <laughs> I saw George Lopez. You were. Yeah, I worked a um, a golfing tournament for the like the celebrity golfing tournament yeah. out out there, and I just got a quick picture with the dude. He's super nice, super humble. We're Raider fan, so we got along real good. <laughs> Have you gone to his um restaurant? Uh yeah, the one at the Yamava Hotel. Yeah. Yeah, I've been to that one. Um. Trail Tacos is bomb too, and I met Danny too. He's dope. Is that He's, yeah. How's their food? Like, what would you rate them? Danny, Danny for sure is like a ten out of ten. Like everything you get is good. Uh, George, George, oh, I was super drunk that day when I ate. I was <laughs> you had the munchies and all that. No, nah, yeah, for sure. So I just ate everything. I'm pretty sure I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was drunk. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna check him out. Was, ten out of ten. I think it was my homie's birthday or his mom's birthday or something like that. But we got there pretty drunk. <laughs> Batista from WWE. Huh? Batista. Batista, I was working with uh, Real 92.3, and I was just in the office just seeing what was going on in there in the, in the top floor. Were you into WWE back then? Or were you oh, yeah, I was big. Yeah, I was, I mean, I would have been crying like a girl if I saw The Rock. <laughs> like, but oh, it was you're... Batista. I was like, oh, yeah, like, Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, all of them, like, together. I was like, yep, that oh. was the trio that we grew up with, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that was definitely... 
That's crazy. Well, I brought that up. Like, something they wouldn't believe you unless he actually had the picture to show it. You know what I mean? Like, sure. bro, like, Batista was right here. <laughs> had bigger than my fucking head and shit. Like, that's fucking wild. <laughs> yeah, like, man, like, I brought it up because recently I was watching the WWE, the TLC. Oh, okay. The Table Levels and Chairs and yeah. Jeff Hardy, the Hardy Boys and Rey Mysterio were, like, my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And recently at the sofa, I met, well, not met him, but I saw Rey Mysterio. I was like, well. Yeah, I mean, because of the radio station, I got to go to my first wrestling match. They just had extra tickets. I went. I was like, fuck yeah. it. I'm already there. Let's go. It was for the SummerSlam, and I saw Bobby Lashley. I was like, dude, like that's one of the ones on the rosters when I was a kid. <laughs> for sure. And stall yoked out and shit. I'm just like, god damn. I'm pretty sure he's old now, but dude, he still got it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool, man. Like, dude, I, I don't think I've been to a wrestling match ever. That was like my first and my last pretty much. <laughs> how long, how long, how, this was like was it? three, four years ago. Oh, recently though, 2017, like, 2018? Yeah, with, yeah, yeah, like at least I think it was my first year, so it was 2017, the first year of radio. So yeah, you were on Food Gone Wild too. Uh, performed for the their show at the Novo with CNG. Oh, how was that event? Oh, uh, it was it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's one of your best ones right now? Not recently. Definitely. I mean, it was our first one coming back ever, like after COVID. So, I mean, there were still a lot of restrictions and shit we can, you know, do or have people around us, like, that we usually would. But, I mean, for what it was, like, that was a good comeback from out of COVID, really. That was, everyone's come back, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I, they had Cypress there. Cypress brought out um, fucking, uh, who did he bring out? Rucci, Kaylin for real, for real. He brought out... What else was there? AZ Chai, I think. Oh, they're pretty dope. I mean, they're all they're all dope. They're all you know West Coast as fuck. But it's yeah, like, dude, yeah. it was everyone's first time back, like performing on a major stage at the Novo, like in front of thousands of people. So I was like, dude, it was lit. Finally, was like finally, we are back. We're literally back. Yeah. <laughs> so it was cool. I I loved everything about every minute of it. Then Kate Frost. I, that was his legend. Dude, that's OG right there. I yeah. was like, yo. Uh, did you lear- learn anything from him being? Being a legend from the Chicano rap thing? I mean, just be proud of who you are, man. To be honest, that's that's a, that's his message. Just be proud of who you are and and take care of your own. Really, you're you know the Mexican community, Latino community. Just take care of each other, look after each other, build each other up. Stop trying to put each other down, hating on on others and shit like that. You know, just either you're with the movement or you're not. You know. Yeah, for sure. Because I'm pretty sure he's got his haters back in his days. All you know, people. I think him, it still oh, he's does. not hard. To, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, he's not even hard. Blah blah blah. You never been. You know what I mean? Like, whatever rumors, allegations, whatever. It's like, bottom line is, he could have gone even further had people supported him even more. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, like another inspiration, like MC, MC Magic. Oh yeah, MC Magic. <laughs> Everyone loves MC <laughs> Magic because <laughs> he had that real love behind him about everything he did, all his craft, his producing, like. And yeah, it's crazy, it's, too, because growing up, I thought he was, like, well, he's West Coast, but I thought he was from California. Yeah. But he's from Arizona. Yeah. And that's, like, a whole new sound. I mean, like, the West Side of the Hemisphere, yeah. Like, <laughs> But he got it, though. I mean, he grew up, I mean, listening to West Coast funk and, obviously, everyone else on the West Side, like Ice-T and um, Joe Cooley, you know what I mean? Yeah. So he just put that sound back in into it and just, like, fuck, legend. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I mean, any shout-outs, anything else you want to promote, anything? Yeah, yeah, I mean, say? like, come check out our studios. We got Room 11, HF Studios out in Glendora area. Um, shout-out to Exania, shout-out to the Sing Team, shout-out to uh, Solid Mob, shout-out to, I mean, pretty much everyone that's helped get me to where I am today, I Heart Radio, everyone, um, Bootleg Kev, you know, DJ Head, uh, shit, who else would I say? I mean, everyone in the movement that's, you know, been down down with the homies since day one. Down. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, like, to everybody. Like, everybody, say de monte, thank you for raising me right, you know. And just, uh, you know, just watch out for more projects that we're coming out right now. Um, next summer, we're going to take over for sure. Young Drummer Boy, the other, everybody, we, they, we on something. We definitely on something with some gold. No, for sure. <laughs> we, I we see on, that too, and we hopefully you get all your goals done. And you yeah, know, man, just everyone, going. just 
Everybody love each other. Oh, shout out to Ash too for setting yeah, us shout up. Out Ashley, for, Ashley for yeah, setting us up. You up. She's a role for that. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, shout out. She, she's one of my day ones on my first show. Yeah. That was like her pair right there. Yeah, and then she'd be from where my artists are from too, so I'd be like, Bro, it's just full circle. Like, how, you, connect. you connect. <laughs> it's yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for pulling up, man. Oh, no problem. Thank you for inviting. Appreciate you, it. My bad. Just wish there was AC up in here, but you know what we did. Shout out to everybody that he mentioned and he didn't mention, because for real, we got a lot of shout outs to say sometimes. That we yeah, forget. stay faded. <laughs> yeah, for real. Stay faded, stay faded. You heard? <laughs>